So you want to ride a bike, but you live in an urban area. This is a mountain bike that I've converted to urban street use because to be honest, I was never going to ride this in the mountains very much, especially after I got a full suspension bike. So let's take a look. If you want to be the ultimate commuter, riding over potholes, doing long distances in the city, this is how I set up my bike. So I hope this helps you set up yours. I should mention at the beginning that I have a super light road bike that I used to ride in the 90s and my body just can't get into that position anymore. But I still like to go semi-fast and I still ride the streets. Uh, I should also mention the streets are pretty well shot. There's potholes everywhere. This is the actual street I live on and you can see there's a lot of holes. So I like having fat tires that aren't gonna pop versus having little skinny tires. And also the geometry of a mountain bike that you've converted for street use is a lot more friendly and uh, you can get out of dangerous situations better than you can with road bike geometry in my opinion so let's take a look at what i've done to this thing on the front end i've got a rockshox recon silver fork to be honest you know if this is a probably a 350 to 400 hundred dollar bike i paid 350 dollars for it on sale but you want to go a little bit up from the walmart bike so i would recommend going to your dick sporting goods or some similar sporting goods store waiting for sale and then catching whatever they have on sale for for between 350 and 450 just to get better components better reliability and just something that's not going to break down on you or be super heavy or just be a piece of crap so the rockshox recon fork on the front i probably didn't need to redo the fork to ride on the street the only good thing about it versus the cheap fork that came with this is that it has a lockout so if you're climbing and you want to get extra extra energy to the ground you can lock it out normally i just have it on i just like the extra shock absorbing benefit when i'm riding around the streets and going over bumps to have a suspension shock so even a cheap suspension shock will do a lot better than a hard uh, rigid bike would do on the street the tires are wtb thick slicks so they're mountain bike diameter so there's a lot of a lot of tire there but they are completely slick so there's no knobs on this to slow you down or to wear off or just to, to make loud noises when you're riding i really like having these fat slicks on the street they've got plenty of grip even in the wet the only time you might worry about it is if you get into some sand or gravel but they even do okay in that situation and the max pressure on these is i think 65 psi so at 65 psi they're they're hard as a rock and you can go real fast and if you want to be comfortable you can pump them down into the 30s and then they give you a little bit of extra suspension they're built to last forever. I've had these for two years. I've had one flat tire so far and totally happy. I ran over a industrial strength staple that was like a three quarters of an inch long. So it would have popped a car tire. So in terms of reliability, if you don't want to have flats and you want something that lasts forever and it works on the street and that is fast, the thick slicks are the way to go. They have different, uh, different thicknesses. You can get skinny ones or fat ones. I like the fat ones. Um, on the handlebars, I put these risers on it just because that way I can sit up straight and be a lot more comfortable like I'm on an exercise bike when I'm riding. When you buy a, a fork, it comes with a lot of metal up here and you're supposed to cut it down to whatever length you need. So instead of cutting it down, I put a bunch of spacers in here so the handlebars would be extra high. You can see how high they are relative to the seat. And then with the risers on there, I'm sitting up straight like I would be doing at the gym on an exercise bike. So that's extra comfort. Uh, fenders, I've got monkey nuts. These are removable Velcroed on plastic fenders. And then on the back, just I ride in the LA River sometimes and there's all kinds of green slime. And if you don't have a fender, you feel it go up your butt crack and you just wonder what kind of chemicals you're absorbing. But it is a quick release. So if it's a nice day, you can just pop it off like that. And then you don't look like a weirdo riding around. But I definitely like having fenders on the street versus not. And got a mini bike pump strapped to the frame. Got my tools back there. And then Vaunt sent me these lights. So I did a review and they sent me some lights. So thank you Vaunt for the lights. Uh, I like to, I like these that don't require replaceable batteries. So it's, it's just basically a, a USB charger. Plug it in, charge it up, and then it's good for, I think, 30 hours or something. I just charge them whenever I think about it and then uh, don't ride all that much at night, but that way I know that they're there when I need them. If you are gonna be riding on the street, some mountain bikes, usually the higher end mountain bikes will have a little teeny sprocket up there, but if you buy a cheaper mountain bike, it'll have a bigger road sprocket. So on this one, it's got a perfectly good big sprocket on it. And I, I spin out of it about 28, 29 miles an hour, which is faster than I can go anyway, you know, and that's only downhill. So for like, if you're really trying to push yourself and exercise, you get the cheap mountain bike, the big sprocket, small sprocket combo on your basic beginner cheap mountain bike is gonna be enough. Pedals make a difference too. Your cheap bike's gonna come with some crappy plastic pedals. And if you get some real decent mountain bike pedals with good bearings in them, it makes a qualitative difference. Definitely feels better when you're pedaling, probably saves you a little bit of energy as well. I'm using an SDG, Speed Defies Gravity, 
Bel Air saddle with a prostate groove in it. So you, you really, a seat is a very personal thing and different people have different preferences. I've, I really like the way this one's shaped. So it works perfectly. Like the butt bones go here, everything else kind of rises above it and it just works for me. But uh, when, finding a seat that works is important rather than just taking whatever seat came with it and complaining about it for five years. And if you're buying a new bike, most likely it'll come with disc brakes. So in some cases, the disc brake is actuated by a cable and in other cases, it's, it's hydraulic and it's got fluid in there. Um, this is a controversial subject and people have hated me on the internet for saying I like mechanical brakes better, but especially if you're a guy that just wants them to work and be reliable, mechanical is gonna be better than, than a hydraulic setup, in my opinion. There's a little more lever effort, so you do have to pull harder on the lever when, when you wanna brake, but it's not unreasonably hard, so. The trade-off of reliability and functionality and cheapness of mechanical brakes versus getting the cheap, crappy version of a uh, hydraulic brake that's just one step above this is really night and day. And when the hydraulic brakes go bad and get bubbles in them, you can't stop. Or you have to pump, 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 pump to get any kind of stopping power. So I advise if you're going for a cheap bike and you're trying to build just a, a beater, uh, reliable commuter that you know is always going to work, I would go with mechanical disc brakes. And that's it. I guess during the quarantine, everybody's getting out and riding. A lot of people are on uh, mountain bikes and road bikes, and you see them all out there. So that's how I would set up a mountain bike if I was going to just use it for street. So I hope this helped. Uh, get out there and ride. Whatever you got, get out there.